Hey everyone, my name is Kyle, and today I'm gonna to show you how to build this masonry style layout using Webflow. This is a really popular layout option for portfolios, for photographers or designers, but Webflow really doesn't have a solution for this out of the box. Credit for this concept though goes to Sabana, a Webflow staff member on the Webflow community forum. She brought this up a couple of years ago, but I wanted to make a video about it, highlighting exactly how to accomplish this. First, I'm gonna show you how to build this using just link blocks with images inside of those. And then I'm gonna show you how we can power this layout using Webflow collections. So let's get started. So the first thing you need to know about building this layout is that it only works with images that have varying heights. So if you have images that are all exactly the same height, you're not going to get the staggered effect. Everything will stack nice and neat on top of each other and the next column, the effect will be the same. So you're not gonna really get that quintessential staggered layout that is really what makes this a masonry layout. So for example, you can see here that these images are lining up a little too neatly, but I'm getting the staggered effect everywhere else and I can definitely adjust these images once I've got them in to achieve that effect even better. So when you are creating images to put in your portfolio, you just wanna make sure that they are not all at the same height and you can play around with their positioning to get a really nice staggered effect. So I'm gonna hop over to a blank page and show you how we can accomplish this. I've gone ahead and added a section a container inside of that section and I have just a blank empty div with no classes on it. Now for the magic, the entire masonry layout depends essentially on this one setting. So if you go over to your style panel under typography with this div block selected, we're going to open more type options and in the columns we're going to type in three. What this does is it gives us a sort of a hidden three column layout within this div block. Now, all content that's placed in here will now flow between these three columns. I'm gonna go ahead and rename this just columns. Now, you can't see the columns yet, but once we start adding content, you'll be able to see the images start to fill it up. So let's go ahead and we're gonna drop in a link block. And this is so that the image we place inside of it will actually be clickable to a project page that you can build in the future. And then we'll grab an image block and toss that in there. We'll go ahead and choose our image. I'll just start with this first one. Now before we start copying and pasting this image, uh, I'm going to select the link block and give this a class. We'll just call it thumb. This way I can style all of the images in our layout at once. Okay, now we've got a style on our link block, a style or a class on our columns. So now we're good to just copy and paste. Now you see that it's going to flow down to the bottom, right? I'm just gonna paste nine images. So now we have nine images that we can replace. If we click on the second one, double click, I get the replace image, and we can start adding in everything. Now you can see that when I did that, it actually moved it here to the bottom. It's attempting to you know, reflow these columns based on the height of the images that we're giving it. So I'm just gonna click around, start adding our images in. Again, you can replace the, or reposition these as needed later. Left off with that one. And then let's grab, what do we have left? Let's grab this guy. Well. Maybe that guy. Okay. So we're not really getting exactly that effect that we want yet, but I'm just gonna minimize all these. I'm gonna grab this thumb class. You can click on any of these to get your selector up. And let's give them 
a little bit of margin. Now I'm holding down the Option Alt key on my Mac when I drag this up, and that gives me um, it, like the a mirrored effect, right? So I can only I can drag one, but it actually affects both. And if you hold down Shift, it will affect all of them. Uh, but we don't need that, so I'm going to reset it back to zero. We're just going to go 10. So that gives me 10 pixel margin on the top and bottom of each image. Now you can see that the gap in between them is a little bit smaller. So if we go back to our columns class, which is our, our wrapper class with the three text columns added, we can grab this little ellipses here and we can change our gap to match the total margin that we gave our image class, which is 20. So I'm gonna grab this right here and I'm just gonna move it over here. Gives us a little bit better staggered effect there. So what's really great about this solution that Sabana came up with is that because the style, that text column style, is what's driving our layout, we can adjust that at each of the responsive breakpoints so that this is a fully responsive layout. So if I click on ta on the tablet up at the top, you can see that it still looks pretty good. It's still got the nice three columns. Now, sort of depending on the container width that you choose here, we're, we just have the default uh, Webflow container and it's at 940 pixels. But you can just go over here to the style panel in that text column box and just change this to whatever you want. So two actually looks pretty good and because this is you know, an image heavy site, we want the images to be nice and big. Then we can go to the portrait, or sorry, the landscape mobile. And two still looks pretty good, but it's at this point that we realize that we don't have any margin on our containing wrapper, that columns div block. So I'm gonna go back to the desktop with the columns div selected, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna give this 20 pixels on each side. So now we have a matching 20 pixels, and actually I'm gonna give it 10 on the top and bottom, and now we have 20 pixels all the way around, 20 pixels between each image and between the gaps in the columns. So now if we go back down to mobile landscape, you can see that we've got some nice padding and margin around everything. Uh, previewing that without any of the lines, you see it looks really nice and neat. And then down to mobile portrait, obviously this is looking a little too small. So we'll go back to our text columns, change that from a two to a one, preview this, and we've got this nice, long collection of images. All right, so that's it. That's how to build a responsive masonry layout using that text column functionality. We've got a nice wide grid at the desktop breakpoint, and then as we go down, we start to break it down into smaller columns and eventually down here. So these are just gonna stack Again, you can reposition images as you want, add as many images as you want. And when you're ready to link these to your project pages, you just can create a new page and then come into the link block, head over to your settings panel and choose your page. So one last thing you can do, let's say that you want a full width masonry layout for your page. I have this inside of a container to put it in the center of the page and really just set a max width. If you want a full width layout, just drag your columns div block outside of the container and underneath the section and then delete that container. And now you have a full width masonry layout. It kept all of that nice padding. So if we preview this, we have this really nice layout going on. So that's it. That's how to build a masonry layout for your portfolio using Webflow. If you want to learn how we can power this layout using Webflow collections, stay tuned for part two.